In history, we are taught about many great men and women. We're even taught about those who are not so great. However, it often feels like the same collection are given all recognition and remembrance. Now, this is not to say that the likes of Churchill, JFK or Caesar do not deserve to be spoken about as major players in history. Just that it often sees so many others who stamp their mark go unrecognised, at least to the majority of people. The person I'm specifically going to be talking about today was a man who stood to make his country great, to serve those he saw lose the pride they had for their country. He stood for female rights in a way which had been done by no leader before. He looked to create a country that could self-sustain itself away from its colonial leaders, a place that provided for all its people and did not allow those who were there to serve them to corrupt it for their own gain. I'm talking about Thomas Sankara, a true revolutionary in his thinking and his actions. He's a leader that deserves to be remembered, just like the other greats. He's a man who gave his life for his country and in turn lived it for its people. Thomas Sankara was born on the 21st of December, 1949 in Yako, which is French Upper Volta, as the third of 10 children to Joseph and Margaret Sankara. He spent his early years in Gawa, a town in the humid southwest to which his father was transferred as an auxiliary gendarme. As the son of one of the few African functionaries, then employed by the colonial state, he enjoyed a relatively privileged position. The family lived in a brick house with the families of other gendarmes at the top of the hill overlooking the rest of Gawa. Sankara applied himself seriously to his schoolwork and excelled in mathematics and French. He, sp he went to church often and impressed with his energy and eagerness to learn. Some of the priests encouraged Thomas to go to the seminary school once he finished primary school. Despite initially agreeing, he took the exam required for the entry to the sixth grade in the secular educational system and passed. Thomas's decision to continue his education at the nearest lycée, which was secondary education, Ouzian Colibri, provided to be a turning point. This saw Sankara move away from home, as the lycée was in Bobo de Lusa, the country's commercial centre. He and Sankara made close friends, including Fidel Tu, whom he later named a minister in his government. Although his parents wanted him to become a priest, he instead chose to enter the military, which at the time was popular having just ousted a despised president. It was also seen by young intellectuals as a national institution that might potentially help to discipline the inefficient and corrupt bureaucracy and genuinely help modernise the country. Though a big incentive for Sankara was the scholarship the academy offered, as Sankara could not easily afford the cost of further education otherwise. One of his teachers was Adama Toure, who taught history and geography and was known for having progressive ideas. He invited a few of his brightest and more political students, among them Sankara, to join informal discussions about imperialism, neocolonialism, socialism and communism, the Soviet and the Chinese revolutions, the liberation movements in Africa and similar topics outside of the classroom. This was the first time Sankara was systematically exposed to a revolutionary perspective on Upper Volta and the world. In 1970, 20-year-old Sankara went on for further military studies at the Military Academy of Ansarabe in Madagascar. Here he saw revolutionaries try to take back control of Madagascar from France's rule, and in turn Sankara became enthralled with the ideas of social revolution. By the time Sankara got home, his goal became to strip up a Volta of its colonial legacy. He did not just jump straight into the presidency, rather he had roles in the government beforehand. He started in 1981 as a Minister of Information in Saya Zerbro's military government. After a coup on the 7th of November 1982, brought to power Major Doctor John Baptiste Odorago, Sankara became the Prime Minister in January 1983, but he was dismissed on the 17th of May. In between these four months, Sankara pushed Adorago's regime for more progressive reforms. Sankara was then imprisoned after the French president's African affairs advisor, Guy Penn, met with the colonel, Yarin Samé. The decision to arrest Sankara proved to be very unpopular with the younger officers in the military regime, and his imprisonment created enough momentum for his friend Blaise Compaoré to lead another coup. This saw Sankara become president on the 4th of August 1983, at the age of 33. The coup d'état was supported by Libya, which was at the time on the verge of war with France in Chad. This was not what the French wanted, and in this characteristic of Sankara's presidency. As president, he promoted the ideology of democratic and popular revolution, 
One which Sankara defined as anti-imperialist, as his inspiration came from those such as Fidel Castro and Che Guevara. Sankara was not like many men who tried to gain power for their own good. Rather, he looked to build his country up, focusing on policy in fighting corruption, reforestation, healthcare, and education. His time as president and policy can be clearly understood by his renaming of his country to Burkina Faso, which means the land of upright people. Changing the name to Sankara symbolized the movement of his people's mindset from passivity and colonialism to that of an upright mindset. Though whilst many people can gain power through speaking of dreams and aims, which all people want, it is few who actually find a way to bring their dreams into reality. Sankara believed that everyone should have enough, but not more than what they need. His motto was, two meals a day and ten litres of water for all. And he achieved this when after four years in office, the country was self-sufficient. Though he did not just stop there. He vaccinated 2 million people against polio, meningitis and measles from 1983 to 1985. He understood protecting the environment was a major issue before so many, ordering the planting of 7 million trees. His road and rail building program connected all regions of the country. However, arguably where he had his most radical and before its time policy was with his approach to female equality and government corruption. Sankara himself only earned $450 a month. He sold the government's fleet of Mercedes when he became to power and replaced them with much cheaper vehicles. He stopped ministers taking first class flights as he saw no need when no matter where you sit on the plane, you will all land in the same place. Though this was nothing compared to his work for female equality. His government banned female mutilation, forced marriages and polygamy. Sankara himself encouraged men to go to the marketplace and prepare meals to experience what women face, alongside hiring women in high governmental positions, encouraging contraception so that women could have careers outside the home. Sankara was a true revolutionary, who though was not perfect, as he indeed banned any other political party during his time as president, something which seems unjustified in any case was still a man who genuinely came to power through his belief in his country and the people which were inside it. Sankara pushed ideologies so ahead of his time that it feels so strange that his place in history is unknown by so many in Western society today. He was not a politician who did public work for Korea, like so many do today. No, Sankara was a man whose life was centred around building a safer and better country for those who he cared for. What we should take from Sankara is to be upright people, who look to help and change that which surrounds us, because it is the just and the right thing to do, not because it brings praise and glory. To be a person who truly tries to help out his fellow man, leaving no one behind. Sankara teaches us not to be complacent in our lives and give back whatever we can, even if that may be just smiling at someone in the street or running for office. Sadly, Sankara was assassinated on the 15th of October, at the hands of a coup organised by his former friend, Blaise Compar. Though his life was taken, his spirit and impact is still alive today. <laughs>